Okay, hello. My name's Simon, I'm from the University of Strathclyde, and welcome to Feeding Under Fire. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make hard tack. Now, some of you may know, hard tack is in fact a very hard, very difficult to eat biscuit, and it's famous for being a staple food during the First World War. Every soldier at one point during his time at the First World War would probably have had one of these biscuits to eat, and I'm going to show you how to make it. To make it relatively simple, all you really need is a pound of flour, half a pint of water, and half a tablespoon of salt. Now as you make it, the most important thing is to make sure that you're putting as little moisture in the recipe as possible. So within your flour, you're going to mix in your salt, just pour that in, and then add your water as slowly as possible, spoonful by spoonful, because the most important factor is to get as little moisture in it as possible. If it becomes sticky, it's going to stick to the pan, it's going to stick to your workbench and it's not going to keep because moisture is the reason that it will go off. Okay, now you've got a mixture which is as dry as possible but is malleable. You want to put that onto your work surface and you want to roll it out. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect square but you want to make yourself um, a rectangle as much as possible and then if you need to you can trim the edges away to give you that shape. You then want to be dividing it. As you can see I've divided it into four separate, you can see my biscuits are slightly smaller than the bigger biscuits, it doesn't really matter. These things weren't really uniform anyway. You want to divide it and create um, four lines across and probably three lines down. It depends how much mixture you've used and how you present it. Now once you've divided them, you then want to take a chopstick or anything, any single point, and you want to make small holes inside of each individual biscuit, probably about four across. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is called docking, and this is to make sure that they don't rise too much, and it makes sure that it cooks all the way through. In the oven, you want to have it at around 180 degrees. You're going to put it in for between 30 and 40 minutes, but you need to constantly keep an eye on them. They were cooked at a low heat and you would make sure that they weren't burning. One of the biggest misconceptions of the First World War is that men starved. It's simply not true. Images of men eating rats huddled around sandbanks. This wasn't really the case. There was food, however it's the quality of the food or whether you'd actually want to eat it which comes into question. Private AC Warsop in 1916 arrived in France to serve in his first trench in a place called Vermeers and he wrote in his memoirs that our rations in France were a third of a loaf a day a little cheese, jam, margarine, a cut of bacon in the morning and bully beef stew when it could be made or a tin of bully beef instead it never varied except that sometimes we had a tin of McConaughey hash and that was really good with army biscuits we were not really hungry but never satisfied, and we dreamed of a good meal someday. During the war, the British Army sought to provide around 4,000 calories per man per day, and this is really important when you consider the immense level of physical activity that the men were engaged in, building trenches, fighting, and so on. In the early stages of the war, propaganda even promised an improved diet in the army, and for some this was true. One particular recruit wrote back to his mom excitedly, saying, there's meat every day. But again and again, reading through the diaries of soldiers, you see there's an issue with variety. At the end of the war, Trooper S.E. Butler in 1918 wrote, as he served with the 2nd Lifeguards Machine Gun Battalion, about his dinners. And he recalls the role of biscuits as being constantly in his diet. It was always stew. They were very often made a stew of bully beef, McConaughey stew, and all that sort of thing, and biscuits. They boil it up in a big cauldron, and it was good food. In France, it was a question of having your food whenever you could get it, because there was always a certain number of men who had to stay on guard with the guns while the others went back in relays. So, that's it all cooked and ready. Taking it out of the oven, and let it cool for a bit. So let's have a look at it. So what you'd be looking at is a biscuit that looks something like this. Should have kept their shape. And it may be 
a little bit malleable. Okay. Now, give it a squeeze, and you should be able to break it. But it shouldn't be easy either. Now you can understand when you see you start to break it why the would have been cooked maybe twice, three, or even four times to make it as dry as possible. But this is a pretty good example. Give it a try. Yum. Doesn't really taste like anything. Very difficult to chew. Next time we will need some water. Use some water. This is one that was made about three or four hours ago and then allowed to cool. And you can already see they're quite hard. These ones were made <clears throat> about a month ago. Same recipe, exactly the same way. But they'll leave a mark on your table. They're almost impossible to break. And it's, this is a reason why men would have to smash them with the backs of their rifles to try and make them palatable, to dip them in their coffee cups with any kind of liquid to be able to eat them. Not exactly what I want to do. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed making hard tack and you've learned a little bit about it as well in terms of the First World War. And thanks very much for watching Feeding Winter Fire. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.